Hello, my name is Richard Spade. I'm a vitreo retinal surgeon with the Vitreous Retina Macular Consultants of New York. Today I'd like to talk to you about the interactions between the vitreous and the macula. Now a number of things can happen as you get older in terms of the vitreous and how it relates to the macula and macular function. We're not talking about macular generation. We're talking more about mechanical effects that can occur through this process. The vitreous is a jelly-like substance that has 99% water and 1% protein. Over the course of your life, these protein fibers can contract and they can start pulling on the back wall of your eye. It tents up the macula by this pulling and distorts the macula. And the vision can be quite poor for this, with this condition. We can repair that by taking away that pulling of the vitreous by doing an operation called a vitrectomy. The next topic we're going to talk about is macular holes. Remember that the vitreous is contracting, it's pulling on the retina. The vitreous is starting to detach from the back wall of the eye. But in some people, the vitreous Remain, may remain adherent to the central part of the macula, and it may pull on the central part of the macula and put undue stress on that. Now, it can deform the tissue, or it can actually cause a hole to form there. If a hole forms, you can imagine that if you're looking at something, light rays coming into your eye wouldn't strike any retinal tissue because there's a hole. So you can't see very well. People can see their, their side vision is still intact, central vision not so much. In addition, the, vit the vision is going to be distorted. Let's talk about the surgery for macular holes. Recall that there may be vitreous traction on the hole, and there's often some tissue around the hole that causes the hole to open up. Scar tissue will grow out of the hole along the edge of the retina. Scar tissue likes to grow and it likes to shrink. So if the scar tissue shrinks, it's going to pull the hole open. We really don't want that. So during the surgery, we remove any kind of scar tissue around the hole, and make the hole come down close together by using an air bubble inside of your eye. You can imagine that when we have tissue injury anywhere in your body, that we approximate the tissue and give it time to heal. So if you had, say, a cut on your hand, we would sew that cut back together, and the sutures help hold it together, and they keep it stable so the tissue can heal. If you had a broken arm, we would put a cast on your arm that would position the bones in the proper position and hold them like that over periods of weeks or months until a bone could heal. The same thing has to be true with the macula. We have to bring the tissue back together and we have to hold it in place. Now the retina is very, very uh, delicate tissue and it's hard to hold the retina in place. We can't put a cast on your retina. So what we do is we fill up your eye with an air bubble and the surface tension of the air bubble pushes the retina and holds it in place in a very gentle sort of way until the retina itself can heal. Over time, this air bubble will go away by itself, or this gas bubble will go away by itself, and the vision will be restored to a certain extent, not, usually not 100% with this operation, but to a certain extent after the air bubble goes away. Generally speaking, the surgery for macular holes, puckers, and for vitreomacular macular traction syndrome is very successful. More than 90% of patients with macular holes can be fixed on the first surgery. Generally, the vision gets better after surgery, and people are happy.